Good morning, everyone. It's Brenda Quintana here, and I am in my Beehive studio this morning, and uh, it is Casing Tuesday, and many of you know what that is. It means we give a card out of the catalog a makeover. So it is really great lately since we've been doing sketches and sketches is just kind of um, a schematic so with all the layers uh, designated with measurements to make it easier to create the cards since we've been doing the sketches um, we've had a lot more of you post cards and I love that um, I can't even remember how many people we had last week but it was so great to go in and see all the different designs of cards um, all the different stamp sets used so it's a really great resource to go in and see all of those cards so I'm so glad that so many of you are participating in our challenge and I hope you are enjoying them um, it takes a little bit of time to get the sketches uh, done because we're working from uh, cards in the catalog and sometimes they're not always straight on right so um, I have to go in and um, uh, kind of figure out how big each of the layers are and um, so I'm pretty accurate I think um, sometimes I might be a little bit off sometimes uh, we're using cards of non-traditional sizes so that makes it a little bit more difficult but for the most part it should give you an idea of how you can create the card and I'm so happy that so many of you uh, enjoy those sketches um, because it makes me feel like it's worth my time Time to create them uh, so um, I know I hear many of you are in a big deep freeze today I hear there's um, some school cancellations in uh, Minnesota because it's gonna be so so cold out there um, so stay warm I hope all your heat is working and um, uh, I hope you you guys are all doing okay we are in Boston today um, it's cold but it's not super cold um, and we are probably gonna get a little bit of snow today before we get the deep freeze to um, uh, probably not as bad as the the middle states um, but uh, yeah it is definitely winter here <laughs> so without further ado let me turn around my camera and let me jump in and show you how I made today's card oh and I love today's card um, this is today's card it's a dog and cat card and I love the theme of this card because growing up you know we had a dog and I, I love dogs and typically um, stereotypically dogs and cats are uh, said to not get along but that is really not true there are many great dog cat relationships um, out there um, and I, I kind of think that's hopefully a metaphor for how we should be in the world we should um, embrace differences and uh, love each other try to find uh, common ground and uh, so I love this card because it kind of speaks to my heart you know um, friends forever you know wherever you are whoever you are I hope we can find common ground and be friends so um, a bigger message for today's card and it fits perfectly on the heart too okay let me turn this camera around oh I, I see some people uh, um, from frozen Indiana and uh, schools are out until Friday Wow that's uh that is quite something just to be out because of cold and not because of snow um, you know those kids that have to wait outside um, it's pretty cold hopefully it doesn't affect my walking later on this week but the good news is I have a treadmill and so I use that a little bit more in winter than I do in spring okay so I already showed you my card um, and, and I love this card it is based on this card see this card right here in the catalog okay it's on page 12 see this is an eight and a half by 11 page and this is a little tiny card in the corner might not have gotten too much notice but you can turn this card it's, it's a great layout you can turn this card into a lot of different things and so what i did with it 
was instead of using a circle, I used a heart and I think that works perfectly. So, you know, you can look around and see what other shapes you, ha you have in, you know, that you can maybe sub out the circle or keep it as a circle. Um, originally, when I was designing this card, I was just going to put um, this uh, dog on here. But then half the heart kind of looked a little blank and I'm like, hmm, I wonder if the cat will look good on there. So I kind of blended the two together and it worked really well. So I'm very excited about that. These are the two stamp sets that I'm using, the Nine Live stamp set and the Happy Tail stamp set. And um, if you are a dog and cat lover like me, you will want to get both of these sets. The Happy Tails stamp set is also available as a bundle because it has um, a matching dog punch. The Nine Live stamp set does have a matching cat punch as well, but it is not available as a bundle. So you can buy the, um, uh, the cat punch separately and the Nine Live um, stamp set. And then Happy Tails is available as a bundle. So that's cool. When you do a bundle, um, you save 10% um, as compared to if you were to buy both of those products alone. Um, I love both of these stamp sets. They've got really great greetings. Um, and I like how you can, um, you know, use the greetings a little bit interchangeably. Like um, you could use just for you uh, with the cat stamp set. The paw print would also work for the cat. You could use the bow um, over on the dog set. So, you know, these can kind of work together. So they're actually nice to have both of them. Okay. So for this card, let's start off by doing the die cutting so I can uh, work on this focal point, which is really um, the showcase of the card. So let's grab the Big Shot. And um, I'm going to need, let's cut the heart first. So we're gonna need to run this through the Big Shot twice. Um, this morning I've got my regular platform um, because we're going to do some embossing as well. So I've got my regular Big Shot platform with a thin die adapter and one of my cutting plates is down. I've got um, a couple of pieces of cardstock in Lovely Lipstick and Whisper White. Let's do Whisper White first. And we're going to be using the heart and this is from the it's not from the Santa Signpost Frame Lips. That's an old one. It is. Wow, I usually do a better job of labeling things. Let's grab the right name. Um, this is also, I have a complete supply list um, on my blog. So you'll be able to click on my link. Um, that goes to my blog and it has a complete supply list down below but usually I have my things labeled better. Um, this is called the Be Mine Stitched Framelits. Um, they are a great set, um, lots of different um, ways and stitches to use them, so I love them. Okay, so this one uh, is the biggest heart, and I'm just going to put it on here. Now, this is a very different sort of heart, so let me show you how this cuts out. So let me run this through. So this comes out in two pieces. Let me lift this up. So it cuts just a plain heart, but it also cuts this outer piece right here. So when you get this, you can change up the frame to a different color, which is what I did. Or if you prefer, you can always just match these back up again on your card. So you have a white heart with a scallop border and it will have stitching on it. So that's one way to do it. But for my card, I want it to have a different frame. So I'm taking my lovely lipstick piece which I think, did I mention, it's a three and three quarter inch square. That's about the right size for the heart. And I'm gonna run it through a second time so that we can get that um, frame, that border piece in a different color. 
So now I have this extra heart. I can use it on a different project. But for this project right here, and I'm just using my paper piercing tool to poke through one of the holes so I can grab a hold of the frame and pull it out. So we'll be using this frame for that white heart. Okay, and then we need to do one more thing while we have the big shot out. I'm going to remove the thin die adapter and we're going to go on to the base platform. And I am going to, we only need one cutting plate for this. Um, this is the subtle embossing folder. And I am going to um, take in a piece of gray granite cardstock. This is the same size as a card front. It is five and a half by four and a quarter. And I'm going to run it through the subtle embossing folder. This gives kind of like a fabric texture. This is a thick embossing folder, so you only need one cutting plate. So it's on my base platform. And stick that second cutting plate on top. And then I will run it through. Good morning, everyone that has joined me this morning. I hope you guys are nice and warm where you are. So Subtle Embossing Folder has a very light texture to it. Um, that's what I want. I don't want anything to overpower my focal point. So I just use this very light texture. It's just going to make the cardstock look not so blank on the front of the card. Okay, we are done with all of our Big Shot work. Let's get to this heart. And we're going to need the dog and the cat. I've got those on D blocks. And we're going to need our Memento ink pad. It would be kind of good to have like a piece of a scrap piece um, just so um, when you're stamping off you don't get it onto your work surface because the dog and cat will have a little bit coming off the heart. Okay, I've got some red ink stuck from somewhere on a finger. I don't know. I am transferring red ink from something which is not good, but hopefully I won't get it on my project. So I'm just going to take my ink pad. I'm going to hold it in my hand rather than doing it the other way around. This way I can really see to make sure that I've got full coverage. I'm going to aim my dog up and to the left side of the heart, kind of centering the head in that top curve of the heart. I'm going to stamp it down. All right, so you can see right here, the little paws came off the edge, and that's what I want. Now I'm gonna take a post-it note. I have these white post-it notes. Um, so I'm going to put my post-it note right down the center of the heart, um, just so my cat tail doesn't cover up my dog. And we're gonna add the cat tail back in in a different spot. So. Now I'm going to take my cat and cut my cat and I want my cat to be kind of the same deal. I want my cat kind of up in that right corner and so I'm just going to stamp him down right like that. And now my tail is going to not interfere with the dog right here so when we peel this off we're gonna have this kind of deal, okay? So the cat kind of looks like he's kind of behind. We're also gonna be covering up this part right here with a banner. So um, actually it didn't turn out too badly because the dog's tail just kind of curves up along the cat. Um, but um, since we're covering up that one section here, it doesn't matter if there's a little bit of busyness going on right there. Okay, so the last thing we need to do is we need to add the cattail coming down here because I found, I'll just show you real quick. So my banner is going to come across here. Um, it looked a little weird to have nothing down here at the bottom of the heart. And so I'm like, huh, what can I do? 
So um, I'm going to add the tail as if it's coming down this way to, you know, fill up that space just a little bit. So what you want to do is you want to clean your cat stamp really well. I've got my stamp and scrub here and this is the way I clean my stamps now. I've got um, my stamp and scrub, which is my um, uh, kind of like a, a brush side and I'll spray some stamp and mist on here. Um, clean part of my cat some of the ink off there and then I'm using my chamois which really cleans all the rest of that ink off you want all of it off because I don't want to transfer any of the ink to my project where it shouldn't be so even though my stamp is a little bit stained already from stamping all the ink should be off of here now because the chamois does a really good job of taking that ink away now I'm going to stamp this off just a little bit because my stamp might be a little bit wet still from my chamois. Okay, now it should be dry. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to reposition this same post-it note. The sticky side is down right here and I'm going to put it just um, kind of right on the line where the dog and the cat um, end. And um, I'm going to turn this around a little bit so I can do a better job. And I'm going to just ink up this tail piece. Actually, it's easier if you do this. And I'm just going to ink up this tail coming down. I don't really want ink on the rest of the cat because I don't want the cat to transfer. Um, I don't want the cat to accidentally stamp in a spot where I don't want it. So I'm just kind of bringing this down as if the cat would have its tail coming down like that. And then, let me just move this out of the way. When I peel this off, I have a cat tail coming down like that. Once the banner's across, it's gonna look perfect. So that's how I did that. Now let me show you how I colored. I used a little bit of a, um, a different way to color this. Um, one of my favorite ways to color things, to give them a bit of interest, is to use the light, smoky, slate Stampin' Blends. Um, right now, that um, particular blend is on back order. So I thought, let's try something different. So I wanted to have colors that were all available right now. So this time I'm using my ivory instead of my light smoky slate. And so I'm gonna use it as a secondary color on both my dog and my cat. So what I'm gonna do is I'm coming in with my ivory brush tip and wherever there is a little bit of darkness or lines, I'm going to add that to my dog, okay? And also I'm gonna kind of outline my dog just a wee bit with this blend and maybe the top of the head, the back. Okay, I think that's pretty good. You could add a little to the tail. So this is my secondary color. And now I'm gonna come in with my Crumb Cake Light, the brush tip as well. And I'm gonna go over top of that ivory. And I'm also gonna fill in the white space. So I'm kind of blending out the ivory and turn it. Sometimes it's easier to do strokes in a certain direction. So, you know, always feel free to kind of turn your project. And I'm just coming in. Some of this will be covered up, but I don't know exactly what will be covered up. So I kind of need to color my whole animal and make sure I get all of it. Now you'll see on my pictures on my blog, you will see, especially on the cat, you'll see that variation. Um, and I love how that turns out. It just, it's pretty easy. It's a pretty easy coloring method. Um, and it um, it adds a little bit of a two-tone to your project. So 
Let me show you. See how there's a little bit of a two-tone going on now because the ivory has blended with the crumb cake. So we're gonna do the same thing for the cat. I'm gonna take the ivory. If you see right here, the cat lost a little bit of its line right here. Let me show you how you can fix that. This is a journaling pen from Stampin' Up! And you can just come in here and just finish off the line right there. Um, just in case that will be visible. So you, it will connect that cat and the dog. So it looks like the cat is all the way behind the dog. So you can fix that fairly easily. Um, and then come in with your ivory again. And I'm hitting all the spots again that are dark. Um, I always like to do kind of more shading on the bottom. and around the edges because that's where you always find the shadows, right? Is kind of where things meet. Okay, so now we can go, this is gonna be a darker cat than it would be if it was the light smoky slate. This is the dark smoky slate. So you're gonna have to be careful not to lay down a lot of color because it is dark. So I'm just kind of coming along and just doing it section by section. Um, let me grab this little foot down here. Come up. And the one place I really kind of want to be careful of especially is his face because I only really want to go over that once because I don't want to obliterate too much of the detail on the face. Okay, so here we're going to do the face. So I'm just coming up because I don't want to ruin that detail. Okay. So now if you want to, you can go over the body a little bit again you want to blend in any of that color. You'll be able to see it a little bit better on um, the, the cat that is on my blog because um, it dries a little bit too. So you'll be able to see the two-tone effect a little bit better um, as it dries because some of the lighter um, of the ivory is going to come out and that will give your cat a little bit more um, depth to it, not just the one color of, of gray. Okay, that is my coloring. So now we need to get the rest of the card together. So I'm, I've got my piece of Blushing Bride. Let me get the measurement for that for you. This measures four and three quarters inches by three quarters of an inch. Then I'm going to take my banner triple punch, put it all the way in. Um, because this is a little loose in my slot, um, I like to turn this over and uh, see how it looks from this side and center it till I like how it looks and then give it a punch. And then I'm going to take lovely lipstick and I took my uh, friends forever stamp right here and I did this on a previous card as well I took this and I cut right through the center of it um, so I could stamp it in different orientations like up and down or side by side so that's why it appears side by side and yours will when you get it it will be up and down so you can cut them apart um, and then you can stamp them however you want and then I'm just going to ink this up in the lovely lipstick and I think I'm gonna stamp it centered and a little bit away um, from the edge but it's a little bit more towards this edge than this edge okay We've done all of the stamping now. I think we're on to the assembly of the card. So this part you want to pay attention to because I still have to tie some ribbon. 
So let's look at the card base. This card base is a gray granite piece as well. It was eight and a half by five and a half, scored at four and a quarter. Um, let me grab my bone folder so I can smooth down that fold. Then we need um, the piece that we embossed. Let me grab some Tombow. Um, and this measures right, um, it's, let me see which side I like better. This one has maybe a bit more texture. Huh. I'm going to use this as my back side. And my glue looks to be a little clogged. Let's see if we can get it going. Yeah, there we go. And you know if you ever have the Tombow and it's um, clogged, it's very easy to unclog it. Um, with a paper clip. I've got mine here all the time. Uh, I just have this paper clip on standby. I just bent up one of the ends and that just fits nicely down the nozzle. And you can unplug your um, Tombow if you need to. Then I'm going to add this to my card front. Make sure I align it properly. Okay, and that just gives it just a little bit more texture than it would have otherwise. It's hard to see it on camera, but when you get a card in person, it's always nicer than if, like, when you see it on camera because you can't see all the depth and detail on camera. Then I've got a piece of vellum. This piece measures five and one eighths inches by two and a quarter. I'm going to take um, a little piece of um, tear and tape and just put this right down the center here. Um, you won't see this afterwards because it is going to be under the heart. I don't like to use too much adhesive on my vellum because it shows through, it is see-through. So if you put it in the center, it's gonna obscure um, it's going to be obscured by the heart and it's still going to stick down. So um, this is about maybe five eighths of an inch from the bottom of the cardstock and then centered from side to side. I've got a piece of designer series paper. This is a lovely lipstick and this comes from the 2018-2020 designer series paper stack. Um, it is a nice six by six stack and it has all of the in colors. Um, so, and it's got polka dots on one side and stripes on the other. We'll be using the polka dot side and I want to add this um, to the cardstock, but I also want to make sure to leave this end free because I want to tie some ribbon about, around it. But the only way I'm going to be able to do that the way I want it is if I um, put this end down first. So um, you can use, I'm going to try using Tombow um, just on this end. And I want this centered on my vellum piece. Make sure the glue is only on this side. And yeah, I'll center it. Okay, now we need to add the heart because this little guy is going to come. It's not, it looks good here right now, but it's actually on top of the heart. So for this, the best way to stick this on is to put this heart on first and then take the frame and add it. So I'm just going to center it from side to side and the heart, the bottom of the heart is going to be flush with the bottom of the vellum. So just take some Tombow and add that on. I'm trying to see if it's somewhat centered. Okay, that looks good. And then I'm going to take this piece. It's easier to do in this case, it's easier to do the inside first and then the frame comes around. And 
and then just make sure it's settled down. Look, it's starting to come together. It looks pretty good even, oh, you know what I missed? <laughs> I missed my little cocktail, didn't I? Yes, yes I did. Oh my gosh, all right. Yes, Mary called it. She saw it before I did. That poor little cattail got no ink on it at all. Okay, I'm just gonna come in with my um, my smoky slate dark and just fill that in. There we go. See, I didn't forget anything, Mary. No, no, I didn't. All right, okay, so now we can add this little piece across here. So I'll take some Tombow and this one, um, I can put Tombow all the way um, because um, I need to slip it underneath my designer series piece, designer series, yes, but I don't need to slip it under this piece. So I'm just going to kind of come across here, centering that, needs to be down just a little bit. All right, that looks pretty good. See, now the tail kind of adds, you know, it kind of makes the heart look a little bit better if you bring it down like that. Where did my ribbon go? There it is. This is the 1 8 inch, 1 8 inch, inch sheer ribbon. That Say that out loud quickly a few times. So I'm just gonna wrap this around here and just kind of measure it. Um, just so I have enough to tie and cut it. So where did my little locking tweezers go? I was so good at cleaning up this morning. I don't know if I put that back or not. Yeah, I'll have to use, I have two sets of locking tweezers. Um, I'll use these ones because I have misplaced my other, my smaller ones. So I'm just going to take this and tie a little knot. And then if you bring your locking tweezers in, these are a product that I, uh, is, it's not a Stampin' Up! product, but it helps me so much when I'm tying because now um, this is like someone's finger right there. It's holding the knot down. And then you can come in and do the second knot. And you can find those um, in the beading section of a craft store. You can also find them online. And I've looked for them uh, there on Amazon too. Locking tweezers. And then you've got your little ribbon like that. And then you can come in and just angle cut your ribbon. That needs to be a little shorter. Okay, that looks pretty good. Yay! What do you think? Um, I just love the whole cat and dog theme, how we got both of them on there and they look pretty. And um, that's a good message, I think, for today, isn't it? for a cold winter day, right? Um, oh, and Karen says she has a pair of the tweezers too. Yeah, they're they're great. And also they're great for, you know, wrapping gifts and stuff because then you don't need that um, extra person. And they're a little thinner than someone's finger, a little narrower. They usually come to a tapered tip. So they're really handy. Um, definitely recommend um, them as a tool. I'm just gonna scroll back and see if there's anything that I missed before I sit back around. Ooh. The Mississippi has 32 degrees. That's cold for you guys. Um, I used to live in Tennessee and I know, I, I was like the only person out there walking in the winter. Like I had, we had this walking trail where I lived in this neighborhood with a lake and a trail around it. And in the winter I would have the lake to myself. <laughs> And my dog, of course, um, but it was uh, uh, kind of interesting how 32 degrees um, was cold for, for people down there. And, and uh, you know, for me, 32 degrees, like this time of year, like I'm happy for 32 degrees. I'm like, yay, when it's 32 degrees, it feels warm. But we're all equipped up here in the north, right? Okay. 
someone from Ohio. Oh, I'm sorry if things are, are blurry. Hmm. I don't know. Um, I don't know how, I think most people don't have a blur, so I'm wondering if it's your internet connection. Um, from Denmark, from Arizona. Awesome. Okay. Okay, well, let me turn my camera around. I didn't get any questions. Oh, and Karen says her, her video is clear, so good. Um, because the, the problem with troubleshooting with um, technology is everyone has a different system. I have a, you know, a system where I'm filming and, and everyone is viewing this on a different device. And, you know, um, a volume can be adjusted sometimes. Um, video blurring cannot always be adjusted. But... I will be loading this up onto YouTube later today. Um, so if you wanna go back, if you missed part of what I was doing, if you wanna go back and look at it, um, it will be on my blog. So if you just copy that blog link, um, you can get in very easily. Um, and have a look at the video again and also have my supply list there and I really appreciate your orders when you order from me I have a host code for the month and you get an extra gift if you order $75 or more for the month um, and celebration is going on right now and there's a lot of great products um, just a caveat if you um, just grab this um, the beautiful uh, foil sheets um, they're almost depleted so if you want these as a celebration item um, it's a good time to get them as soon as possible because um, I don't think this product will be coming back in afterwards um, the grapefruit grove on here is like iridescent it is just gorgeous um, so I you know it is a really great product to get so don't wait too long on that because um, it is um, in danger of selling out and it is one of my favorite products uh, celebration products right now um, so I hope you guys have a great week and I will be back here next Tuesday with another card um, so I will see you then take care bye bye